Welcome back. In this video, we are going to, or I'm going to introduce the setup process for two column proofs. Uh, this is the format and the process I'm going to expect you to follow in all of your classwork problems uh, when completing a proof problem. Now, not all the problems in our classwork are going to be proofs. Um, some are going to be, you know, you have to solve something or find something out. Uh, then you won't have to do this process. But if it's a two-column proof, um, if the instructions are to say prove the following and you're given like a given and a prove and a diagram, then you'll do this two-column proof process. So from, from your book, you will go ahead and copy the given. What is given? So in this one, we're given that angle A is a right angle, angle B is a right angle, and we're asked to prove that angle A is congruent to angle B, and then our diagram A and B. So this is going to end up on your sheet of paper for your classwork. Okay, Copy it right out of the book. And then we'll go and set up our two columns. On the left-hand side will be statements, and the right-hand side will be reasons. And you don't need to use the whole page for this. Um, generally, half the page is going to be good enough. But make sure you've got room to mark on the diagram, um, and make sure you leave enough room uh, for all the statements and reasons. Now, there's going to be a reason for every corresponding statement. So every time you make a statement, you're going to have to reason, have a reason to support it. And just like our deductive structure, it's going to be if then. If something is true, then we know something else. Okay. So continue with your two columns, set up your key bar. So we have a column here for our statements, a column here for our reasons. So make sure you've got that. I'll expect to see these particular lines here uh, in your in your classwork as well. Uh, you may even divide it a little higher here. So, so there's our two columns. And on the left-hand side, those are going to be facts. Those are going to be something that's very specific. Okay. So our givens are going to go over here in the statements. Okay. We're going to say angle A is right. Angle and angle B is a right angle. So we're going to copy that right down. That's going to go in that side. Okay. So this side also has details that are unique to the question. And then we'll continue following through the process. And we will number our statements. So we make a statement. Statement number one, A is a right angle. Statement number two, B is a right angle. Okay. Now our reasons, well, I think I continue numbering here. So we're going to work our way down, step four, step five, step six. And then finally, at the end, we might prove that angle A is congruent to angle B. Our reasons on the right-hand side, those are going to be our universal truths. Okay, They're going to apply to many situations. We're not going to refer to a specific angle or a specific measure or something on, on this right-hand side, okay? These are going to be more general, okay? It's going to apply to many similar situations. In fact, over on this side, you're going to write your theorem, okay? In fact, this statement would go with this particular theorem, okay? We are given that two angles are right angles, angle A and angle B are right. And we have a theorem that says if two angles are right, then they are congruent. So I could probably take this and put this right here. Angle A is congruent to angle B. Reason And the reason for would be if two angles are right, then they are congruent. Okay? That is something very general. Okay? We'll also use definitions over here. Okay, if a point is a midpoint, then it divides a segment into two congruent segments. So here's, on the right-hand side, we're going to write those theorems and those definitions and those postulates that we have committed to memory. 
over here on the left hand side is going to be the more specific. You know, we're not going to put, oh, since angle A and angle B are right angles, and we know right angles are congruent, then angle A must be congruent to angle B. That, those aren't reasons. We're not going to put that over here. That's a paragraph proof that's something different. Okay? We're just going to be very specific, very precise in what goes in this reasons column. You guys that are like good computer programmers kind of understand this step by step by step process. Okay? So, um, there's an example of how to set this up, what we expect on the left-hand side, what we expect on the right-hand side. Again, make sure you number every statement and reason because the statement, statement six is going to hook up with, with reason six. It's going to correspond to that. Statement four is going to correspond to reason four and so forth. Okay, so next we will go ahead and do a sample problem. So here's an example of uh, what you might see in a homework problem. Okay, we'll copy this out of the textbook. We're given that angle RST is 50 degrees. So you may want to go over here and, and mark that angle as 50. And angle TSV is 40. And so we'll go ahead and mark that as 40 degrees. And angle X is a right angle. So I'm going to encourage you to get in the habit of marking your diagrams. That's very important. Um, make your life a little bit easier in the long run. If you get in the habit of marking your diagrams, it really tells a nice story of what's going on. Okay, and then we want to prove that angle RSV is congruent to angle X. But we'll need to go through the two-column proof process. We can't just say, oh, it's really obvious as that those are congruent. We've got to state why. So. Copy your statements and reasons down. Uh, draw your two columns. And this is not as easy as I make it look. So our first statement, angle RST equals 50 degrees. And how do we know that? Well, that was given. And notice I'm numbering my statements and my reasons. That's reason statement one. Statement two, angle TS. V equals 40 degrees, and that is also given. Now, if you want, you can write all your givens down at once. A lot of guys like doing that. Um, sometimes uh, I like to go ahead, and if I already can deduce something, if I know something, or if I come up with a conclusion based on one or two givens, I'll go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to step three, and I'm going to say that angle... RSV equals 90 degrees. Well, how did I know that angle RSV is 90 degrees? Well, RST and TSV, 50 plus 40 is 90. That is addition. So I'm not going to say it's obvious or because, but I did addition. 50 plus 40 is 90. And then I also know that angle RSV is a right angle. I need to get these to be the same. Either I need to get this right angle back to 90, or I need to get this 90 to become right. Uh, so I have my language is consistent. So I'm going to say angle RSV is right. Well, why is it right? How do you know that? Let's think about our if then. If what, then what? Well, if an angle, any angle, not RSV, but any angle is 90 degrees, then it is right. How about that? There's our P implies Q. P, if an angle is 90, implies Q. So step three implies step four. If 90, then right. So back to my givens, step five. Aren't we given that angle X is a right angle? And that was given to us. Well, let's take a look at our statements. I'm going to mark my diagram here. I've got another right angle. I've got a right angle here at X. Well, if angle X is a right angle and angle RSV is a right angle, 
What do we know about right angles? Of course, we know that all right angles are congruent, or if two angles are right, then they are congruent. So step six, I can say angle RSV is congruent to angle X, and my reasoning is if what? If two angles are right, here in steps four and five, I have two right angles. If two angles are right angles, then they are congruent. So I use that particular theorem. Okay, some new things here. Addition is new to you. Um, this is just the definition of a right angle. If an angle is 90 degrees, then it's right. It's a our simple definition of an, a right angle. And then our theorem, if two angles are right angles, then they're congruent. Um, so there is a, a sample of a two-column proof. This is the kind of thing I would expect to see in, in your homework. So you'll have, you're going to start compiling a list of, of reasons. Uh, memorize those theorems and definitions and postulates. As you'll hear me say throughout uh, the school year, uh, many geometry proofs, you already have all the answers. We give you the answers. The hard part is knowing when to plug the answers in and, and where they go. But again, a uh, good sample of a two-column proof, and we'll practice this more when I see you in class.